Hello, I am James Swanick, and today we are talking to Doug Rice, who is a 47-year-old father of two, married 21 years, and Doug is a retail executive and real estate investor who, as we're recording this, is 98 days alcohol-free. And Doug just shared with me before we we started this interview that uh, he lost 21 pounds in the middle of doing his 90-day alcohol-free journey with me and my team. He improved his relationships with his wife and 19-year-old son. And he shared with that he's got his productivity back. He actually got a promotion at work in the job that he always wanted during these 90 days alcohol-free. So I've said it a million times. When you go 90 days alcohol-free, it's never really, I shouldn't say never, but it's really about just giving up alcohol and feeling clear and feeling great. It's about all of these things like losing 21 pounds, feeling better, improving your relationships, reconnecting with family and loved ones. That's what it's about. Doug Rice, welcome, mate. Congratulations. Hey, James, how are you? Mate, I'm feeling good, but I, I suspect maybe not as good as you're feeling at the moment now that you're 98 days alcohol-free. Why don't you just describe for us how it feels at the moment? Uh, you know, it, it just it, it feels fantastic. I mean, I certainly uh, I put that target out there. Um, I'll be honest, since I started drinking, you know, as a, a late teenager, I've never gone more than 30 days, and I'm 47 years old. So, you know, to hit a, a milestone like 60 days would have been quite an accomplishment, but to go 90 and then continue and know that this is uh, this is going to be my lifestyle choice, it, it feels fantastic. It feels amazing. Yeah. What feedback have you got from your wife or children or colleagues about your experience in the past 90 days? You know, it's just been, you, you look fantastic. You've got plenty of en- energy. What are you doing? Uh, my wife certainly uh, used that word, I'm proud of you. Uh, which is, uh, you know, we've been married 21 years and and there's been a, a number of times that I've, you know, certainly made an ass of myself, you know, maybe uh, I, I've gone through seasons in 21 years, let's just say that. And uh, so to to finally, uh, I could give her credit and say, you always told me that I uh, maybe should think about not uh, not having alcohol in my life. And, and, uh, and here I am, no alcohol in my life. And she was right. It's amazing. Wow. So good. And uh, people noticed you, that you'd lost the 21 pounds. Yeah, I, I, yeah, absolutely. You know, I I, uh, I started just hydrating, drinking water, and I started I started running. Um, I I was a kind of an avid runner. I took it up about seven or eight years ago. And uh, I'll tell you what, when you uh, when you drink alcohol, it's pretty tough to get up in the morning and run. And uh, so it was on again, off again. And so I just I just started running. And I'll tell you, uh, it, it was slow at first. You know no breath, no legs. Uh, uh, but almost immediately the weight started to drop in my face. And, you know, one of the things, you know, within project 90, you know, you, you get to get on zoom calls and you get to connect with the community and, uh, post on Marco Polo. And so I started getting comments from the community, uh, almost immediately, like, wow, you, 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 you look uh, like almost immediately, like within three weeks, I was already shedding pounds and, uh, you know, it's been consistent and, uh, I mean, who doesn't love to hear um, feedback like that? Uh, you know, I work remotely, so I don't get out much, you know, as with most people coming out of the pandemic, I, I'm stuck in an office at home. But when I do get out, uh, my friends have certainly noticed noticed as well. You know, I, uh, I visited some friends over Super Bowl weekend and uh, when they all slept in, I, you know, I got up and ran every morning and they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, this makes me feel good. I'm going to go out for a run. It's sunny outside and I'm going to enjoy my day. So, yeah, I love running. I'm going to ask you about what your drinking habits were like um, before you joined us, uh, before you set upon this journey. But just before I do, what was the promotion you got at work? Just tell us a little bit about your job, what you do and, and the promotion that happened. Well, I, 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 uh, I work for a retail company, a fast growing retail company, co- you know, coast to coast chain. And about, th- you know, three years ago, um, you know, I'd written a job description, you know, it was one of those uh, dream jobs, you know, that I thought, I thought, 
my company needed this position. And so I wrote the description and I turned it in and uh, it was talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we certainly need this position. And I said, look, I don't care uh, if it's me or it's somebody else. Our company needs this position. And uh, here we are um, about a month ago. I was the position was created, approved by our board. And uh, and I was uh, I was asked to take this position. And so I'm in my dream job and uh, and it and it feels great. I get to. I get to uh, impact uh, people, and I help get to help grow a company, and that feels uh, it feels amazing. You know, I shared with you I'm in retail, and there's not many great retail stories out there. Um, I mean, every time you look at the paper, you hear about retail companies closing stores, and I happen to work for a company that's growing. So, and I get to be part of that growth. So it it it, it feels great. And uh, yeah, I'm excited that, that I have so much clarity and energy to be able to step into this role and know that I'm going to make an impact. I can't say that the old Doug, um, you know, two steps forward, one step back Doug, um, could make the impact that, uh, that I'm going to make, uh, you know, now that I'm clear-minded and alcohol-free. It sounds like that you had already taken steps towards this role before you actually chose to go alcohol-free. But I'm just curious, did being alcohol free during these 90 days impact the promotion or, or do you see that how that influenced the promotion, either how you showed up, maybe whether there was a negotiation on salary or anything like how did being alcohol free in the 90 days impact that promotion? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know that I can directly uh, link being alcohol free to the promotion. I mean, I'd like to think that uh, the way I was showing up as, you know, during the month of January, uh, when our company was budgeting and deciding, you know, okay, February 1st, our fiscal year starts and uh, Doug is, Doug's our guy and, and uh, you know, February 1st, he's going to be in this new role. I'd like to think that make, made an impact, but, uh, you know, honestly, I think it was, it, it was the, the efforts uh, over the last three years. Yeah. You know, that I've been contributing that that ultimately landed me here. I've always been a, a, a you know high performer, and uh, you know even even operating op- operating well below uh, um, uh, my capacity, uh, I've still been you know done done rather well. So let's dig into that because you consider yourself to be a high performer, and just for context for the listener or anyone who might, might be watching here. Um, our Project 90 community is filled with people who consider themselves to be natural high performers, but they've got something in the way of them performing at a high level, right? Or either or at their highest level might be a better way of saying it. And often that thing is alcohol. And often it's not just alcohol, it's what's driving people to reach for the alcohol. So you consider yourself a high performer. What was going on in your life? that was contributing to you not performing at your highest that maybe led you to me and, and our team and what we do? Well, I mean, I'll just be honest. I shared when we opened the interview that, that alcohol has always been present in my life. You know, my, uh, you know, I was raised by a single mom and she always came home from work and had, had a cocktail. Um, I certainly made that part of my routine, you know, I don't know, through osmosis or, 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 or whatever, um, I also, I grew up in a bowling alley and, uh, you know, if you're, you know, familiar with, uh, bowling alleys in the eighties, I mean, they're, they, this is bowling alleys. This is dark and grungy bowling alleys. Right. And, uh, so there was always alcohol present and, uh, I just like to enjoy life. And so I think over the years I, you know, I ended up, um, using alcohol because everyone else was using alcohol. That was my environment, but I also found that I used alcohol well, I'm clear now that I used alcohol to uh, to celebrate, and I also used it to escape. Um, and you know, that's that's just kind of uh, you know, it's it's interesting um, to be so clear minded during these 90 days to to know that um, I didn't really understand why alcohol was so prevalent in my life until until I was clear headed and can really look at um, all the evidence of. Um, the choices I was making and the impact that it was having, you know, in terms of that productivity, uh, you know, when you're drinking alcohol, you can't, um, you can't really be productive. So I was probably losing in the evenings, two to three hours of productivity. And that could be productivity in my relationships. It could be product, you know, could be productivity at work. Um, 
It could be productivity on my side hustle. I said that, you know, I invest in real estate on the, on the side. So you know, I could be doing things after work, but no, it, it was, it was the type of um, drinking activity where I would just sit down with a glass of wine and play on Facebook, a complete time, time waster. Right. You know, and, and then, you know, if it was, if it was too much wine, if it was, uh, you know, uh, too much wine and then a, a glass of whiskey, you know, that impacts your next day. Um, I think about the, the, uh, the mornings and the, the productivity loss, getting up right before I had to be up uh, to be on conference calls, um, uh, you know, just kind of uh, not being present, you know, throughout my mornings and uh, just not feeling, feeling 100%. And, and, you know, I look at my morning routine now and it's, it's all about productivity and getting up early and starting, starting my day off, um, eating well, exercising, uh, and, and then putting, putting the energy I have to good use. So, I mean, honestly, we're talking, um, you know, 25 to 30 hours a week of productivity loss because of, of, of alcohol. That's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, that's three days, maybe four days of productivity. In a five-day yeah, no, no. work week, is is that how much you were losing? Or no, like- I mean, I'm saying throughout the throughout the course of a seven-day week, uh, yeah. that yeah, I mean, it's it was quite it was quite a bit. It was quite a bit. And you wouldn't, by any stretch of the imagination, refer to yourself as an alcoholic. No, I don't believe so. No, I don't believe so either. But you were drinking enough that you were slaughtering three days productivity every week, at least. Yes. In in my opinion, as, as, as many as three days. Now that's not every week. I'm saying that's on the high end of the spectrum, but uh, you give me three days and let me put my head down. I'm a planner by nature and I'm going to get some stuff done. And uh, you know, this, uh, this 90 days, honestly, especially the last 60, if I look at my career as an adult, these have been some of the most productive days and weeks of my lifetime. And there's one thing missing, alcohol. That's it. It's insanity. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's re- absolutely remarkable what you're sharing. How old are you? 40? I am, f- I am 47. 47. 47 next week, right? So we're recording right. this now at 47. You're going to be 47. Yes. And these last 60 days have been the most productive in your adult professional life. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Just letting it sink in for dramatic effect here. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Wow, yeah. Isn't that something? When did you first start working? How old were you when you first started working? I started working when I was 14 years old. Um, I've always had a full-time job from the time I was 14. Like I said, I had a single mom. We didn't have a lot of money. You know, I, I... you know, I, I, I worked for everything that I, I wanted and uh, I've always had a job. Uh, there was one time where I was, uh, I, I was fired from a job and I, I had a new one within like a day. And, um, and then I had a company closed down. And so I went through one period of my life uh, where I was uh, unemployed for an extended period of time of, I believe, seven or eight weeks while I went through the interview process and, and, uh, and, and found, uh, found a new job. And, and, and that's actually the company I'm at now. I've been with this company for eight years. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I've, 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 I've always, uh, always worked and it's always been, uh, uh, progressive, um, improvement in terms of responsibility and, and of course the dollars. So really, if we're going to put a headline on this, cause I used to be a newspaper reporter or journal- journalist, you know, play around with headlines. Uh, you've been the most productive in 32 years. This is the most productive you've been in 32 years. Because you started when you were 14, right? 32 okay. plus 14 is 46, and you're about to be 47. So that feels like it does. And this is the tip of the iceberg. I'm just ready to get going. <laughs> yeah. So I'm already I already know what the headline, what how what we're going to name the podcast will so be like most productive in 32 years. This is the most productive I've been in 32 years. Um, it's not always about productivity, right? Like it's also about connection with family. And you mentioned right. your wife and you mentioned your son. Can you talk about what happened with those two relationships? 
Yeah, so I've, I've been married for 21 years, and uh, my, my wife is, uh, lives her life alcohol-free. Um, you know, she she drank very early in our relationship, um, but she she wanted, you know, I have a, I've been married 21 years, I have a 21 year old daughter. So she, uh, she cleansed her body and, and we started having kids, you know, uh, just right out of the, right out of the gate. And, uh, and she just chooses to live alcohol free. And it's always been, I've always had a, uh, somebody could drive me home or drive us to where we were going. And that would, that was always kind of nice, but there was always a disconnect between, um, you know, she always has a good time everywhere she goes. And, and, and I love her to death, but we never, uh, drinking was never an activity that we shared. So there was some separation there when, when I would drink, it was out with my friends or I had activities, you know, I, I might've shared with you that I grew up in a bowling alley. So I was a semi-professional bowler for most of my life. So it was away from, uh, her on the weekends. It was traveling to tournaments, you know, a lot of drinking with the, with the guys, um, you know, type of, um, uh, relationship. So there was a lot of separation. Um, when I was drinking, I certainly, you know, wasn't always with her. Um, and, uh, I know in the last 60 days I've been more, more conscious and I've been writing in my journal that, you know, uh, we, we still love each other. We still have a lot in common. Um, I have all this time on my hands now, um, we can do our date nights, you know, we can take the, the the time just to enjoy each other. My kids are 21 and 19. We're going to be empty nesters soon. And so we really need, I really need a good plan to, uh, to reignite uh, our marriage. And, and uh, we plan on, you know, traveling the world. And uh, we've got this list of 30 places we want to go before it's all said and done. And so um, just, I really feel good about uh, where our relationship is at. Um, I can see the improvement in the way uh, she she talks to me and the way that I treat her. And uh, as far as my kids go, my daughter's away at college. And so she's come home a couple times during the, the 90 days. She was home during the holidays. And she certainly noticed that I wasn't, I didn't have, I didn't have a bottle of wine. I've got a great relationship uh, with my daughter. And, uh, you know, she said all along, I'm really, I'm really excited for you. I'm proud of you. Um, we went to our cabins, uh, while she was home, just her, her and I had a, a daddy daughter, like two days in the woods and fishing and, uh, you know, all alcohol free. And, uh, it was just uh, amazing bonding time. My son, on the other hand, he's a 19 year old boy. And, uh, I, uh, you know, I could use the term knucklehead. Um, I was a knucklehead too, when I was 19 years old. I, and, and so we've had a challenged relationship. Uh, we've certainly had a challenge relation, challenging relationship, um, you know, to the point where I think, um, that our relationship was as frustrating for him as it was for me. And we both escaped, um, it, with different ways for me, uh, no surprise. My escape was to have, you know, have, um, just go to the other room and have a, have a glass of wine and then not really address, you know, our relationship, um, he would scream at me and storm off. And, uh, you know, I, part of me thought that was normal. You know, he's a 19 year old kid. You're not always going to, you want, you don't want to hang out with your dad. Um, but it was to the point where uh, it was a strained relationship. Uh, it was definitely closer to my wife. And so we actually, in the course of the last 90 days, we're going to therapy to learn how to, to talk to each other. And, uh, something really great happened uh, about two weeks ago. We were at a therapy session uh, he hadn't screamed at me in over a month, and the therapist asked him how he thought things were going, and he said, "I don't think we need to come here anymore. My dad and I are good." And uh, that was awesome to hear, James. You know that that my 19 year old son, you know, thinks that our relationship is good because it certainly hasn't been. It's been it's been challenging. It's been it's been very challenging. And uh, you know the 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 issue for for my son. Is is that my daughter? You know, she's off at a four-year college, and he's nineteen, and and she's graduating next month. By the way, I'm very proud of her. And he's he's at home and and uh, isn't sure what he wants to do. So, it, it's uh, it, it's it's been an interesting dynamic to to have a boy and a girl, and and uh, one at home and one away, and you know, you just uh, learn to be a dad. And I haven't always been there and been present for both of them, like I plan on being from this point on. Mm. What a beautiful story. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's amazing that you've had such improved connection, particularly with your son. 
it must have yeah. felt really terrific to to have him give you that feedback or at least share to your therapist or counselor that there was no need to come back. That must have just felt incredible. Yeah, it 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 did. It did. That was an amazing day. It was a day I wasn't expecting. Yeah. Well, it's a testament, isn't it, to 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 the actions that you've taken. And maybe you didn't expect that to happen when you first decided to eliminate alcohol. But that's one of those surprising, beautiful things that present themselves or are revealed when you're in the middle of that process. Would you agree? A- absolutely. I mean, I I mean, I can I can tell you I'm just much more uh, patient. I'm much more aware of my of my um, the way I'm feeling, and and I'm. I'm much slower to speak now. Uh, a much, I have a much more measured approach when I get in a, 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 a situation uh, with him or a conversation with him. And it's the same with my wife as well. You know, I, um, I think I'm a better listener now. Uh, I mean, I take, I take the time to, to listen. And uh, that's always been a challenge, a challenge for me. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know. I I think I think it's a guy thing. She thinks it's a Doug thing, just not taking the time time to listen. So I'm just trying to be conscious of that. And uh, hey, I've got uh, I've got all the time in the world to listen. So I keep telling her just to talk talk away. I'm here. What was your main motivation when you first enrolled in Project Ninety? Like like what were your what was your goal or what were your goals? And then let's compare that to all those to what actually happened. Well, I, I was very specific from day number one. I knew exactly what I wanted. Uh, it, it was health was was at the top of my list. I had recently been to the doctor, and I uh, the doc, they did the blood test and said, Doug, you have a uh, you have abnormal cholesterol levels. You really need to watch what you eat. You need to exercise, or you're, you know, we're going to have to put you on, you know, a medication like most of America. And I said, I know exactly what I need to do. I need to just start running again. And uh, so the the health piece was very important to me. Um, th- that was right at the top. The second was those relationships, and then and then the third was productivity. So I knew I was losing a lot of productivity. I knew this p- uh, potential. Um, new job was coming in 2021 and, and my side hustle, um, you know, I buy, I I buy and flip houses on the side for fun. I stopped bowling. That used to be my fun, my, my fun deal. And I'm getting older. I can't keep up with 21 year old kids anymore. And so I stopped bowling on the weekends and I started playing with real estate and uh, I ended up with vacation rental cabins and I flipped, you know, houses and, you know, all those TV shows they have in America, right, James, you know, flip this house. Well, I started doing that and, and that's how I have, that's how I have fun on the side. So, you know, all this was picking up and, uh, my, uh, my to-do list was growing, but I felt like I was two steps forward, one step back. I felt overwhelmed and I always felt like I was, uh, was, was chasing. And so when I would get overwhelmed, I think that was one of the triggers where I would escape, uh, with alcohol. And, uh, and, and now, you know, now that I'm on the other side of the, these 90 days, I don't have, there's nothing to escape from. I'm extremely happy. I'm full of joy. Um, I'm lighter. I'm 21 pounds lighter than I was. And, uh, so I, my days are much different and, uh, I sleep better. I mean, I could go down the list of, of everything that's better. And, uh, but if you, t- if you tie it back to, to the, you know, my three goals, relationships are definitely better. No, no doubt about it. Um, uh, I, that's what I'm most pleased about is, is the relationships. And I'm not saying they're perfect. I mean, you can't, you can't, um, overnight change a relationship. Relationships take an investment of time and I've got, <laughs> I've got clarity on that. And so I'm making those daily investments, the health piece, uh, I I've got a routine down, uh, with, you know, I started a fitness challenge in January. I continued it in February. I, and, uh, I, I get up every morning and try and give a motivational group to a bunch of peers of mine. And we, we exercise and try and get 30 minutes of exercise in every day. And so I know I've, I've, I've absolutely crushed the fitness piece and, uh, the results are the, the 21 pounds lost sleeping better. Um, I got to go buy a new belt soon. I'm on that last belt loop. I mean, that's a good problem to have, right? 
I think I think it's a good problem to have. And then the in- increased productivity. So I've filled all of the morning hangover time the um, with a with a great morning routine that re- uh, I'm a planner by by nature. I like to plan everything out, and nothing feels better than planning things out and having the time to actually check all the boxes. And uh, so I go to I go to bed at the end of the day very very satisfied, and and get up the next day and do it again. Um, being a planner, I just, I love, I love checklists and, and, uh, so I get to be, you know, productive at work in the course of this, this, this program, I bought a house, remodeled it and, and sold it. I flipped the house within the 90 days, which was a record and, uh, very, very proud of that. So that's productivity. I think. (laughs) I think so. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, why didn't you just do this yourself? I got a lot of listeners, a lot of people who I kind of like tiptoe around whether they're going to engage my services to help them or not. And a lot of the the common resistance, I guess, or objections to getting some more you know professional coaching and accountability and support in the community or what we offer is I'm going to try it on my own. I think I can do this on my own. I'm, I'm going to use willpower. I'm just going to try it on my own, see how I go, and then I'll come back to you. And in my experience, most of the time, it's probably not almost all the time. It's probably most of the time. I would probably offer it's like 80, 90% of the time. Those same folks end up coming back to me either weeks, months, sometimes years later and say, hey, I couldn't figure it out on my own. And then then they're ready. So let me just pose the question for you. Why couldn't you have done it on your own or why didn't you do it on your own? What inspired you to actually like invest your hard-earned time and your money to join my community and do this with the support? Well, believe me, I've tried it on my own. I've tried it many, many times. There's been probably a hundred times in 25 years where I said enough is enough. I don't, uh, I'm not enjoying my my life right now. I'm not, uh, I'm not fulfilled fulfilling my potential. I could be a better husband. I could be a better dad. I'm going to not drink. And that might go a couple of weeks and, and then, and then something happens. And so, uh, I was just, I was at a point where I had some great things on the horizon, great things on the horizon. I knew coming out of the, the pandemic, um, that, that, um, so many things were going to be better on the other side of the pandemic. And I'm also at a point where uh, I really am clear on what I want in the in the back half of my life, um, just crystal clear on 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 what I want. And uh, I just started connecting the dots, and it was like I'm I, none of none of this is going to happen with with alcohol in my life because that's the one thing that um, that's the step backward. I I can I'm smart enough to take two steps forward towards my goals. It's the step backward that I, I I can't do on my own, and so I just made the conclusion that I I I, I couldn't do my no, on my own that I uh, I I needed um, some structure, and that's certainly what Pro- Project Ninety has uh, provided. It's provided structure. It's provided community. Uh, the community has probably been the biggest bonus. Like I don't think I knew going in how much the community um, helped. Um, it was probably my favorite part, um, you know, the connections in the community and, uh, but, it, but, uh, the accountability as well, you know, the coaching within project 90 was, I mean, it was spot on and fantastic. So, you know, a combination of all those things I, I just said, uh, definitely it brought me, you know, I set a record. I've never gone 90 days, 90, 90 or 98, 98 days today, um, in my entire adult life, you know, and, and the difference is, is your program versus me trying to do, do it on my own. I have 25 years of evidence that I couldn't do it. But Doug, but Doug, but Doug, I can, I can do it on my own. This time I'm really going to do it. This time I'm like, I, 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 this time I'm really, really motivated. I'm going to, I can do it this time. What are you, what's your response to that? I mean, just look at the evidence. Look at all the times that it didn't work. Uh, and, and the answer is 100% of the time it didn't work. <laughs> for for me for me you know and there is there is the other piece there's the you know there's this uh this was the financial investment in myself and i i truly believe in 
Oh, I, I, I don't, I don't know what the term is here, but um, something along the lines that your heart follows your money or money, is your heart or whatever, whatever, but um, focus it, goes where your money goes, your focus flows where your money goes. Yeah. Some, something along those lines. And uh, so there, there was an investment here and, 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 uh, but it was an investment in, in, in myself and my future and it was money well spent. And uh, I don't, <laughs> I mean, honestly, it was, it, it was, it was the best money spent in 2020 by far, <laughs> by far. And it was a great way to end, end of the year. You know, I chose to, to, to take on this alcohol challenge going into the holidays, which was, which is an interesting time to say, I'm not going to have a drink at Christmas or New Year's. So I was proud of myself for, for making the decision and, and running right through the holidays is, you know, part of my challenge. But Doug, but Doug, but Doug, I'm a very private and discreet person. I don't feel comfortable sharing in a community. I want to be discreet. What would you say to that? Well, it is a, it is, it is a discreet program. I mean, you can, uh, I didn't feel like uh, my dirty laundry was was aired out in any way, shape, or form. Um, there was many people in in the program that were um, participating every day, and then there was people in uh, that were in the Project Ninety program that you could tell that they weren't as comfortable participating. But I believe they were getting as much or more out of the program because of, I think. We could call them the watchers. So they were they were in the room, and they were benefiting from everything that your program has to offer. But they may not have been as outgoing as others in the program. So I mean, everybody has a different path through their ninety days. Uh, but what you see um, during the course of your ninety days is you see people in the beginning of the program, you see people in the middle, and you see people at the end. And and that's the most amazing part is to watch people jumping over the finish line and and it's not like maybe every once in a while somebody makes it across the finish line it's it's like a regular part of this program like there's a lot of celebration um when somebody makes it makes it 90 days because there's so many people like me that um don't have a 90 day streak right like this is this has been you know something that people have tried to tackle on their own and um, there's just something special about Project 90 that it gives you the support to get there. It's uh, it's just it's so it's so cool to watch, and it's it's so it was so cool to be be uh, be be part of um, this community. Like I said, I felt engaged, um, not a couple of days a week, but I felt engaged um, in some way, shape, or form, um, and held accountable every day. And. Honestly, you can look back now when you first start out, you're like, oh man, 90 days, right? I mean, that's like, that's like way in the future. And I sit here today at day 98 and feel like it was yesterday when I started, like it just flies by. And, uh, I don't know how many people tell you this, but it, it's fun. It, I mean, I, I thought it, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a fun journey. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Incredible. What now, Doug? You're day 90, day 98. A lot of people ask, well, what happens on day 90? Like, what happens then? Do you just go back to drinking? Do you do moderation? Do you try to quit forever? Is there enough? Have you received enough training? Do you, do you feel comfortable that you have power over alcohol now? Are you still feeling tentative? Like, what now? Yeah, so I, I, uh, I know that uh, I'm going to live my life alcohol-free. I am, I am, I am determined to, uh, to, to make this a lifestyle. Um, I'll be honest, there was a, there was a point, uh, probably 60 days in where I started thinking, um, maybe I'll get through my 90 days and I'll, I'll, uh, one thing I really loved, you know, the old Doug really loved was food and wine. You know, it was pairing food and wine and it was traveling. And, uh, you and I actually had a conversation in one, you know, one of our, our meetings. Um, and, we talked about, uh, we went through an exercise where we talked about um, how important is that wine with, um, with, with the food. And we went through an exercise where you had us list all the, the, the 10 most memorable experiences in our lifetime and how many of them involved alcohol. And there was only one of my 10 
that involved alcohol and it was my, was my wedding. And I know for a fact it would have been better if there was no alcohol involved because I was extremely hungover. And uh, that was the connection for me to know that um, if my 10 best experiences don't involve alcohol, then uh, I'm going to do life without alcohol because I want everything to be like, I want to crack the top 10 list again over and over and over and over, you know, and, and a lot of mine involve travel and, and uh, I, I can't wait to travel and be clear minded and have all of this energy um, hopefully late into my fifties and sixties and, uh, you know, and be healthy. Remember healthy was one of my big three, you know, and, and I can't say that, you know, I was going to be able-bodied to knock all of the, this travel off my list. Um, but alcohol free, I can see myself doing that Mm. for sure. Doug, congratulations. And thank you as well. you for Thank you. supporting the other members because you were always a very active participant in there and I always share it with people when they first come into our community. Uh, the fastest way to learn anything is to teach it and teaching involves just simply opening up and sharing what's going on. Uh, and I come I, I confident, maybe you can back me up on this, I'm confident this is not an AA group, right? This is not a bunch of people sitting around surrendering to a higher power and feeling uh, powerless against something and it's, it feels very dark and depressing at times as AA does. I've, I've attended some meetings and experienced it firsthand. Um, you know, I, I like to think we've created an aspirational, positive, uplifting type of community here. It's a, it's a different take on it, right? It's a different take. We're getting power over alcohol in a fun uplifting, positive, aspirational way. Uh, And you certainly embodied that for sure because you always jumped in to support others. Uh, You allowed yourself to be supported, to be coached and to be trained. And then you would go on to, you know, Marco Polo or in in our other groups and share what you learned, which is you teaching it. So you, you teaching it embeds the training in your own brain as well as gives the gift of the training to someone else. So just to sum that up, congratulations and thank you. Well, well, thank, thank you. Uh, I mean, like, like I said, I mean, this has been, <laughs> this has been an experience. It has flown by and, uh, but it's not over. I, I'm a lifelong learner. And uh, when you speak, I'm going to continue to listen <laughs> and, uh, and then I'll share with others. That's just what I do. Doug Rice from Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth. Married father of two, retail executive and real estate investor, who's today is 98 days alcohol free. Let's check in on you again in a few months and see where you are in your journey. I'd love to have you back on the show. So thanks so much, Doug, and congratulations again. Awesome. Thanks, James. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my quit alcohol guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? computer would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review this will help the show get in front of even more listeners potentially transforming someone's life you can rate and review the show inside of your apple podcast app on your phone or over on itunes on your desktop thank you so much and i'll catch you next time